Hey everyone, what is up? Hey, real quick before we start the video, want to do a Q&A with you guys, man. Put some good questions down in the comments below. The questions that we get the most, we'll answer in a video Q&A, me and you, you and me, but let's get to the video. What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel, man. We are getting down to the wiring of this thing. But before we get any further, man, we got to get some power in this thing so we can figure out what's what. As a matter of fact, let me show you guys what's going on. Quick little update. You guys remember the last time we did the coolers and things like that. The plumbing and all that for the intercooler and everything else like that. Not for the intercooler, but the blower over there. But I started the wiring a little bit here and we started messing with it. And we kind of started getting the engine bay harness also laid in as well for the motor. But I realized that we're going to need uh, a battery, power, and all that stuff. So we're going to be working on that today. Let me show you what we're working with. Here we have some of the stuff we're going to be using. Obviously, battery cable. This is about 20 feet of it per side. Usually by 25 because you're going to need some extra. So that, and I also went ahead and laced it up with a little bit of wire loom. I already did that. Obviously, we put a one of our lug ends on that side as well. We use our crimper. Um, we're going to be using these guys as well right here. These are going to be basically our battery terminals, really our relocation towards the front of the car. So we're actually going to go ahead and mount these up front underneath the dash. As a matter of fact, let's find a spot for them. Two very boring minutes later. All right, y'all, we are in the car. I want to show you what's going on here real quick because we've already started kind of the wiring process. We got our main engine harness coming out of there. And we kind of got it just wrapped around here on the right side. But man, I really noticed that there's not a lot of room in these G bodies. I mean, even compared to the Chevelle, there's definitely a lot more room in the Chevelle. But we went ahead and put our um, battery terminals here, our blocks, I should say, positive, negative. And then we're going to route and make our cable. Actually, as a matter of fact, look, I'm already cheating. We already made the cables. We're going to have one and for the starter. So that's gonna go out to the starter and we're gonna have the main ground going to the back of the cylinder head on the driver's side. So what we'll do, I'll just hook these up real quick right through there, right? And then feed them through there and they'll just jump out into the motor right away. So I mean, let me do that real quick cause I can't do it with one hand. I think we got these where we want them. I'm digging it, I like it. So this is obviously our starter power, starter wire. And this is our ground for our motor. So that's going to the back of the cylinder head on the driver's side. And that's going to the starter. I'm digging it. So we got those laced up there. But now the bigger question is this bad boy right here. The main one that's going to feed the distribution block over here. But I'm trying to figure out kind of how we're going to do this. Because these G bodies have this channel right here. That kind of lives there and, it, and you know you can run some wire it looks like speaker wire and stuff like that maybe some lighting um i'm gonna see if we can try to tuck that wire or this i don't know that's too thick probably because we got to do both of these in there i'm gonna see if i can tuck them in there somehow if we can fit them in there then obviously we just run them through there if not maybe maybe run them alongside underneath like this Something like that. Let me see what we can come up with. We are moving right along, man. We got the grounds hooked up over here. Uh, we got our lines routed nice and tight, zip tight all the way down. It was actually a little easier than I thought on that wire loom going through that little channel there. It wasn't bad. You just kind of had to keep feeding it and feeding it and feeding it. I fed it from the back front and then we pulled back whatever we didn't need. But I like it, guys. It's, it looks like it freaking was supposed to be that way. Nice and tucked up, goes into that cavity right there, comes up. Obviously, we got our power, and then we got our ground coming up right here. But back here, let me show you guys what we got going on. Obviously, it goes through that channel, right? And then comes right through here, right through the rear seat, and we went up and over in through there. Uh, we did have to make this area a little bigger right here because... We weren't going to be able to fit two wires to there with what already was right there. So we had to grab our little <laughs> little grinder right here, a little sander, and we cut it open a little bit more there and took away the sharp edges. And then we put a little bit of a rubber seal right there. So that way we don't burn down or any kind of shortage or anything like that. So sometimes that extra little step, you guys, will save someone's life or 
even a headache you know later on trying to trace that issue down but obviously we have to now hook up the battery in the trunk you can see i got a lot of junk in the trunk bro in here yeah buddy we got the power baby we got what well, the juices that's the girls like to call it um this is what's gonna be hooking us up man this was gonna be powering the car this is excess batteries um excess power they also call it but uh this is what we went with i want to say this is a 3400 series uh battery um we used it on the last ship i don't know if you guys remember the last ship i don't think we did a battery video on that one but this is a really good battery guys it, it really does a lot it really does they're not cheap but they're definitely well worth the money they got a bunch of cranking amps uh we'll see if we can go over the specs here all as soon as we get this thing open but yeah the, that's the part number right there d3400 if you guys are interested and we also got the mounting bracket for it as well because we're going to be relocating this thing in the trunk um as a matter of fact let's open this thing up bam there it is y'all 3400 amg battery right here you guys this thing is a monster man this thing is over 1100 cranking amp you guys check out the specs right there um there's a bunch of different ones they have this is just the one we went with for this build but this should be plenty of power for us obviously we went to with the power distribution blocks here to add a few different extra powers and grounds so we got those there um but these are actually from a company that's actually here locally in town they do a lot of audio stuff so we got that one i'll see if i can put a link down in the description below for those if you guys are interested and then obviously this is excess batteries um their mounting bracket uh yeah a little bit of uh work we're gonna have to do we're gonna have to assemble this thing up a little bit it's nothing crazy it just kind of sits up top like that a few posts but we're gonna have to drill into the trunk we're gonna have to see where we can find a spot for this you guys remember i told you i had a lot of junk in the trunk oh lord oh man um yeah this is definitely a mess you guys we're gonna have to clean this stuff out um battery i think i want to put it on the right corner if not the middle or even the right upper i don't know let's clean this stuff out first and then we'll go from there you guys want to do it all right maybe with a little youtube magic huh bam yeah that's better huh man that thing was freaking full in here you guys but we're not gonna put it over here obviously we went ahead and moved a bunch of stuff here i think in the middle that is the battery mount you guys from excess power right there um it's not hard to put together it's literally two bolts up top two bolts on the bottom you do have a couple little spacers down there below but we do got to find a mounting location for this thing you guys remember we ran that that's good to go we came in in that corner i thought about just putting it in the corner but I think I want to put it, I mean, I might even put it back here. I think on my ship, I was like somewhere back here somewhere, but I think I'm going to put it in the middle of the car. Two reasons to try to center balance the car a little bit because there's already the driver's sides there, right? The driver's there. He's going to add weight to the car. And there's also the Vortex supercharger on the right side. And then there's also going to be a lot of things going on fuel system power and everything else here on the right side of the car so i'm thinking we put it in the middle mount it there and then only that if he wants to add speakers to the deck lid later it's not in the way because if we put it in the corner it's going to be in the way but we will mark our locations drill a couple spots and it does come with some bolts and nuts on the back side so we're going to have to do that figure that out but let's get to it this is your one and only warning guys before you start drilling Check underneath the car, fuel lines, power cables, any wires hanging off, anything. Make sure you check before you start drilling. Line that up real quick and put this in. A little a little tight but it's better tight that's what she said huh yeah good thing we actually mount it right here on the on the middle guys because i do have a fuel line that like sits right over here a little bit so even if we wanted to mount it on the right side it would have been a problem but this is better i don't know where my allen key is at but let me see if i can find my allen key oh, there we go 
we're gonna kind of tighten that up a little bit so it don't move and we'll mark our other hole center it and start drilling again all right we are all tightened up now before we mount this thing now you can see this is really just like it's, it basically sits in the middle of this plate right the battery itself it's going to balance there they give you these little push button i would i wouldn't call it push button but actually like a sticky tab little foot pedal and it actually rests on the corners of the batteries just to keep it level keep it balanced so make sure you use those but let me go ahead and put these on and we'll put that in there and see what it looks like damn gina i dig it y'all i dig it so this little strap right here the little handle you can take it off if you want to um we might take it off we'll see but we still got to put our distribution blocks right here for our power and ground and word of advice the little foots don't put them on until you got the battery centered because they'll just pop right off but now we're good to go it won't move it won't go anywhere we still have to put our breaker next up you guys we got to mount this bad boy right here this breaker i'm thinking just right where you see it right here nice and easy access right there we'll be able to flow our cables pretty nicely i think right here so i'm thinking we're gonna mount it right here maybe even that way we'll see how it flows but mark a few holes drill them out Got that mounted, started right at the cables, and this is gonna be fine here. Obviously, we're gonna have our input, but we gotta have our output go back to the battery, and then we still gotta run some cables for the power lugs on the outside of the car, but this is too short, guys. This is probably like, I don't know, maybe two feet too short, right? That's what she said, oh, baby. But we still gotta, we still gotta get more cable because we're going to run another set of them for the outside to put some power charging ports on the outside of the car so you don't have to open the trunk every time to charge the car or jump it whatever the case might be but we got to run to the store baby 